What is up YouTube, Skiz1 here, and today we're going to be taking a very close look at the newly released Mosquito Cap and seeing if it's really worth 10 whole dollars. Just to give you an idea, you can either buy one of these or all of those fairly high quality normal skinny caps of various kinds. Any of these other normal skinny caps, you can buy 25 for $10. So what makes this so special? I sell sticker packs of 50 stickers for less than this cap costs. You could buy these two cans of iron lac paint for the same price as this one cap. So what is so special about this mosquito cap? What we're going to do here is I'm going to tell you a little bit about the features of this mosquito cap and then we're going to be going and testing it out in a side-by-side -side comparison versus the needle cap. I will also mention the needle cap here is only $8 US for about 25 of them. So you can either get 25 of these or almost one of these caps. So I bit the bullet and picked one of these up at first glance, I'm intrigued, but not impressed. It comes in this little case. I don't know, maybe so you don't lose it. And in this case is the cap, this little sticker, also not worth $10, and a little instruction manual with like this very tiny cleaning rod to unclog the cap. This seems really flimsy, but I guess it does have to be thin. The instruction manual says, best results with low pressure paint in brackets, Montana 94, Cobra, etc. Use Montana acetone spray to clean out the cap after use. Includes fine wire to unclog two rubber spacers. Use one or two together, two for thinnest lines. Shake your paint for at least five minutes. <laughs> I love how the borders aren't even cut correctly on this little pamphlet here. And I also love how their Instagram down at the bottom here is mosquito underscore cap underscore official. <laughs> so as you can see, this cap looks like the needle was almost welded on here. It comes with two separate rings on the stem of the cap that are rubber and slightly compressible to help control paint flow. An interesting concept for sure. We'll see how it translates into the actual testing environment when we get to that. But let's head outside and do a proper face off between the mosquito cap and the needle cap. We're gonna measure the thickness of the lines you can get, the controllability, cause that's very important as well, and discuss some of the uses for these caps and of course the mosquito cap in particular. Okay, so I buffed out a nice wall here for us to, you know, just use as a little bit of a testing area. What we're gonna do here is, first we're gonna get this can started up. After that, we're just gonna do a couple lines with a normal vegan outliner. This is like a German outliner, basically. We want to have those lines down just to compare what a normal skinny cap line would look like. Of course, after that, we're gonna see what a needle cap can do. And then after we have those lines down for reference, of course, we will pull out the mosquito cap, give it a good test, see what we can do with it, what this cap might be good for, and ultimately if it is actually worth the huge price tag that you pay, that $10, just for this one singular cap. Roughly 25 times more than any other cap you can buy. So I just had this in my pocket. I don't know if you guys can see here, but just from being in my pocket, the goddamn thing bent. We're gonna have to see if we can fix that. <laughs> okay, so I've like straightened it out a little bit. I assume it's still gonna work. I don't think I compressed the actual hole, but if you, if I'm carrying it around in my pocket and it does that, what is the point of this? Whatever, let's just get started. This is a pro tip with skiz. Even if you are using a color like this for something with a skinny cap, you should always start it up with some sort of fat cap. This is like a Widowmaker pink dot cap. It's much easier for the flow to get going initially if it's capped with a fat cap. So, you know, since we have the cap on here, let's lay down just a nice uh, fat line. So now just to see what a normal skinny cap is going to look like, we're going to put a couple lines down with just this vegan outliner. These used to come standard on the iron lac cans for uh, any of you new writers. This used to be what you got on your iron lac cans back in the day. So you can tell that's how big they are compared to the can. So 
So just with a normal skinny cap, you can get some very detailed work. Any writer with great can control will be very happy using a normal skinny cap on any day. It doesn't really limit you in any way in terms of detail. Again, if you do have that great can control, you will be able to get lots of detailed work with a normal skinny cap. So let's see how this compares to a needle cap now. By the way, I forgot to mention the reason I'm using an iron lac can is because it does technically say it's a variable pressure can. Iron lac is sort of one of those in-between ones. It's not low pressure, it's not high pressure. Given our recent experience with this being a piece of garbage and bending, I will say a plus for the needle cap over the mosquito cap is that it has this nice plastic tube which you're not gonna break, it's a little bit thicker. But now right beside the vegan outliner, we're gonna try a couple lines out with this. But one thing you do have to know with this needle cap, it really is set up to be sort of like an old school, like WD-40 can type cap that you would see. Like you can get some controllable enough lines here, but you do need to use a very, very low pressure can. That's how they compare to the vegan outliner lines right over here. And given that this seems to be much more controllable, I would almost just rather use a vegan outliner. Personally, I never really use these, but I don't know, some people might have some value in them. Given that it comes with these two black rings that are supposed to help control the pressure and increase the controllability, we are gonna use it with those on to try and help us gauge how this cap works. I don't know how well you can see that on camera. It's definitely interesting. Wow. Okay. Jeez. Okay, you know what? I know it's a little late in the video, but I might be changing my tune a little bit um, <laughs> with this cab. As you can see, this is very impressive. Like these, these here are the first lines I laid down with it. Um, and those are those lines. These are from the needle cab. And that's a massive, massive difference. And to be honest, I think the two inner rings on this are perfect for this kind of can. Maybe if I was using an even more low pressure can like Cobra they mentioned, then I would only use maybe one of the rings or none of the rings, but really this is great. Like what I like most about this is you can see there's these nice hard edges. There isn't a lot of fray on the cap. Not like down here with the needle cap, you're getting a lot of excess spray deviating from the actual path of the line here. It's very misty on the edges. With the, the mosquito cap here, this is actually incredibly impressive. Like, look at that. That's really nice. You gotta be consistent with the pressure that's gonna happen, which is actually slightly harder than normal um, just because of those rings being on there. But hey, it's just something to get used to, really. I'm enjoying playing around with this. Let's put a few more lines down just to see what else we can learn. I do find it hard to consistently apply enough pressure with those two sort of rubber rings on it. I'm gonna, you know, blame it on that. But <laughs> you can see you can get some really nice tiny dots there. Anything ranging from about that size to that size, that's pretty impressive. It would be hard to get something that even that small with say a normal outliner cap, like the vegan outliner. Something like that would be if you did the whole thing where you tilt the can really close, you might be able to do something like that, but it would definitely be hard. just trying whatever kind of little detail work you might be using this for if you were to put 
some sort of fill-in in a piece with this kind of pattern, this cap might come in handy. Here's another example, a little bit of a fatter line you can get there. There's the dots again. Just to be clear, here's all the lines we did with the mosquito cap. There's the lines with the needle cap and you can tell the difference, right? Like it's very visually clear. And here's the vegan outliner cap. It doesn't even make it look like a skinny cap after you see uh, these lines. So that's incredible. You can fool around and do some fun stuff like this with it as well. Of course, we all love our tags. One thing I will point out with this is you can see that the needle goes about to flush with the side of the spray can there, which is good in theory because in theory you should always be using a can parallel to the wall like this, right? Not bend down or bend up. But the reality of the situation is writers do end up bringing the can downwards a little bit sometimes. And that is what is also gonna cause a lot of the bend here. This is not a problem I foresaw before actually doing it, but a couple times, you know, just on downward strokes, it's not natural to go down like that. It is something you do to bring the can down a little bit, and that is gonna cause a collision between the needle and the surface you're writing on, causing the bendage here. So if the bendage didn't happen in my pocket carrying this around, it actually would have happened anyway on the wall here. So now comes the time for me to uh, actually answer the question, are these mosquito caps actually worth $10 for a single cap when you can buy either of these other two in a pack of 25 for the same price? And of course this answer is going to depend on a couple factors and this is where I ask you what kind of writer are you? If you're someone putting throws and tags up, you don't have a use for any of these three caps, least of all the mosquito cap. Obviously this is a very very technical cap, it will only be useful for technical writers who are doing high detail pieces, very technical pieces. This cap has no place in really any kind of graffiti in a setting that that isn't a setting where you have 10 hours to work on a piece. That's the level of detail you're getting down to with this mosquito cap. So really, unless you're spending a lot of time on very detailed technical pieces, I would not go with this cap personally. That being said, even if you are working on a lot of very technical pieces, I think you do have to have quite a bit of can control to be using this effectively. Personally, I found it okay to use. It's something you can definitely work with, especially after you get used to it a little bit. Granted, you know, the first time I picked up a spray can was 10 years ago or a little bit longer now, so I do have a bit better can control than some. But at the same time, even if you do have the skill to work with this kind of cap and work in such small spaces, with a spray can, you do have to ask yourself, is that something you want to do, even if you are doing those technical pieces? And I think most people, the answer to them will be, I'm fine using a vegan outliner cap. It's, you can get any other kind of skinny cap as well that sprays about the same thickness lines, or maybe slightly thinner and is a little more consistent than this one. This isn't the highest quality outliner cap you can get, but I would say most people are fine using this kind of cap. I would say if you're looking at these needle caps, you know, just throw them away. The, they're actually pretty garbage. You saw how the output looked and it's just sort of vomiting paint out. So the needle cap for me, even as someone who likes doing a lot of technical pieces, the needle cap has no place in my everyday graffiti. I would much rather use this cap over a needle cap any day and I would much rather pay $10 for one of these caps than pay 10 for 25 needle caps. Would I rather pay $10 for one of these instead of $10 for 25 of these? That's where it's a little bit questionable and I say you really have to look at what kind of graffiti you're doing. This cap is worth $10 if you're gonna use it and if you have the skill to use it, but it's not worth anything if you're trying to use it for something that it's not meant to be used for. And I mean, yeah, it comes with a little unclogging thing and it comes with a little sticker, but nobody is gonna buy this cap for either of those things. You can get a five cent sticker for five cents somewhere else, right? So at the end of the day, I do have to say this is a cap that has a lot of potential and I would enjoy using it in a certain environment. $10 is a little steep. I think the way I can put it to be most clear is if this cost $4 instead of $10, I would be giving it a glowing review. Whereas with the price tag of $10, it makes it very hard to like it, even though you saw that I was skeptical initially of it and 
did end up enjoying using it. So I'll leave you with that to ponder a little bit. If you guys want to see more cap comparisons on the channel, please leave in the comments exactly which caps you want to see compared. I can do fat cap comparisons, skinny cap comparisons, all of that will be linked in the corner if they're already done, of course. This series is a series we do on my channel where uh, we review different products and uh, compare different graffiti products as well. We do a lot of graffiti freight train watching on the channel. I showcase a lot of my work. Feel free to check any of that out. Until my next one, peace.